Aries. Hello Aries, happy birthday. This is your forecast for April 2017. And listen, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of action, activity taking place now in your first solar house. And that means you, your personality, the me, myself, and I am energy coming out to the world. This is a time for you to express those things, to really shine and radiate, which you so well. We also have Venus in your first house alongside with the sun. And for anyone having Venus in the first house, that's when we admit and project all that beautiful Venetian energy. So you're definitely the it person, very, very attractive here in April. And so that is gonna work out for you. But see, Venus also rules creativity and the arts and that kind of expression as it also does when it comes to relationships. So this could be a great relationship month for you, Aries. Now, there could be a little bit of surprises also coming up this month. We'll get to that in a little bit. But we have Mercury is gonna retrograde, and that will be from April 10th to that of May 14th. Okay, so here we go again. Looking at the things that might just go a little haywire for us, uh, where there can be miscommunications, mishaps, having to retweak and do those things. It's going to start off here in your second house for money and income. But then it's going to revert back into your first house. Okay, because as we start off April, Mercury has just moved into Taurus, your second house. It's there zero degrees. It will advance up until the 10th of April, where it's going to give you a whole lot of time to look at your money your income, what is coming in, where you're spending your money, what money is going out. It will help you crunch those numbers, get all your ducks in a row. And then as it retrogrades, you will work back over this. So if you didn't have time to look at these things prior, well, it will definitely give you a second chance to really straighten things up. Then Mercury will move back into your first house. So you will have that. That is not gonna be before uh, April 20th. So you'll have a little revisit into your first house, and then as Mercury goes direct on May 14th, you're still having Mercury in your first house. Then it will come back to you, your second house, money and income there towards the end of May. So you're getting like a double whammy chance to really look at your financial situation, Aries. And of course, it's good when we can look over our accounts instead of just going on autopilot kind of just knowing what our expenses are and what we have to spend. Uh, when we tweak through the second house, it allows us to look at what can we cut back on, all those unnecessary expenses and so forth. So by the end of this Mercury transit, you'll actually be in a much, much better place financially. Uh, Venus also is direct uh, uh, on April 15th. So as we start off the month, it is already retrograde, and it will move from that first house back into your 12th house, uh, which has to do with the subconsciousness, it's your spirituality, uh, it's what's happening behind the veil, so to speak. And when Venus is retrograde, well, it allows us to go back over our karmic path in relationships to see how we can improve um, and tweak those areas it might also just be our spirituality, our creativity, all of those kind of things that may now uh, be calling your name to get your attention so that when she goes direct on um, April 15th, then you're fit to fight, good to go, and it will slowly be moving into your first house again, and then you can pick up that great energy, this really, really attractive energy. So we have uh, also Pluto, since we are speaking of retrogrades, Pluto will retrograde this month. Um, not before the 21st, and it will be retrograde until September 29th. For you, your Pluto is in the career house. So until April 21st, you may still be moving forward, pushing forward towards your goals. Do it and do it now if you're wanting to grow and expand, because once Saturn goes retrograde, or, or Pluto goes retrograde, it is going to calm down that need, that urge that Pluto gives us. 
so it won't be before, say, here into October, before we're going to see major shifts and changes within the career field. So for those of you looking for a new job or looking to have an interview, um, this is the time. Hopefully you can get it in box before uh, the autumn. Uh, then we have Saturn too, uh, April 6th through that uh, August 26th. Saturn for you is in your ninth house. Um, Saturn is always looking out for how you structure and secure uh, the area in which it transits. And so for you, it's all about higher education, maybe taking on uh, another master's degree, uh, ninth house is also anything that has to do with the law, say any lawsuits. Um, if so, hopefully, you know, that could have be, been settled before April 6th. If not, yes, do expect there could be delays until August 26th. That goes for those of you with green cards, visas, and that kind of thing too. Especially since Saturn rules like the government, right? And it being in the sign of Sagittarius has to do with travel and immigration and so forth. So hopefully that won't cause a whole lot of a hiccup for you. So listen, what we have here as we start the month, that is Venus moving into Pisces. So you only have a couple of days where it is like into that first house, then it's going to go back to your 12. You will come to see here that you're going to be uh, realigning yourself with uh, dreams. I'm talking more like nocturnal dreams. Pay attention to them. Some of you already have your journal and you're noting in it and I think that is really cool because down the road, weeks and months from now, maybe even years, and you go back through your dream journal, that's like, wow, I, all, I forgot all about that. And it brings it back alive and it kind of reignites those memories. So I would say now is a great time to have that dream journal with Venus back into the 12th. On the 6th, we got Mars and Pluto. Now they're lining up here, great forces to have together when they form this harmonious um, transit. It's a trine, 120 degrees apart. And Mars being in your second house for money and income, well, I can see how you're plowing along, really wanting to um, excel as far as making more money or looking at new money uh, stream incomes uh, that you possibly can make. Uh, Pluto being in that 10th house for career, well, something should line up for you here very, very that first week of April. On the 7th through the 9th, this is a time that you probably just want to pay a little extra attention <clears throat> to what is going on around you. Uh, there could be some Choices that you might need to make, uh, Aries, uh, it's the Sun and Jupiter, and the Sun is you, and Jupiter is just wanting to kind of take off, but it's important to look at both sides of a situation before you make that choice, because if not, well, on the 8th and 9th, Venus and Saturn will square up, and that can just shut down on certain things, uh, and you might go, wow, I didn't see that coming. Well, it could have been attached to that choice on the 7th, so kind of look at how that rolls for you and just pay attention and try to counterbalance it right off the bat once it's there. You'll be in a much better place. On the 14th, we have the Sun conjuncting Uranus. This is the day of uh, what I like to call the wow factor, a day of unexpected insights, news, and this is in your first house for personality, the self. And so it could be you maybe going out with some news that might surprise others, that they may see that coming from you, but it could also be news that you're receiving. On the 15th, as mentioned, Venus will go uh, direct again. Um, and so throughout March, we, we've been dealing with looking back over our shoulder to the past, karmic relationships, kind of clearing things up there. Now you should be good to move forward again. And the 17th, now this is a beautiful day. Circle this on your calendar. Uh, it's a romantic day. Venus and Mars, they're sextile. So that's love and romance, and then we've got action. When they come together, we do the dance. And it's also more than just the romantic aspect of this Aries. The Sun and Saturn are in a great position to one another. And so to me, that says something's going to be locked in between you and your partner, 
uh, commitment type. If you're needing any agreements or signings, that kind of thing, this should be a great time to do so because it's working out for both parties. On the 19th, the sun is moving into Taurus, so that's out of that first house where you're radiating all that beautiful energy out there. Now, focusing on the second house, money and income. Mars is already there, so it's kind of picking up where Mars has been trying to carve out the path. You're more behind it, looking at it, focusing on it. Uh, the sun always being your focal point of consciousness, right? But Mars has been doing actions. And Mercury turned retrograde here, but it will revisit, like I said later. Um, so on the 19th, I feel too that you have, by the 20th, looking at this conjunction between the sun and Mercury, which is now retrograde. Um, so that could be a meeting uh, between you where you're at, what you want, your needs, uh, should I say, but you're also looking at your values, what's important to you as values. We're not just talking money. It could be self-esteem, it can be uh, a lot of things. Uh, but at this point here, I feel that this focus is really aligned with um, where you're wanting to head in the future in the long run, okay? So it's like, the future and the past meeting all on one same degree on, this, on the cusp for what you want as far as building your value structure. Then we have on the 21st, Mars is, is moving into your third house for communication. Uh, third house is all about not just what we communicate, but how we communicate it. How do we project ourselves in that way? If you're going to be giving any talks, speeches, so forth, Mars will be giving you the energy that you need to bring it out there and bring it out in a very, very charming way. Um, but it's also an area of travel. And when I say that it's not necessarily long distance, like out of country, it could just be taking a road trip out of town, right? Or to the neighboring state, or maybe just for a weekend. Mars is wanting to explore, it's antsy, it wants to get out of the house, maybe a little cabin fever when Mars is here. But third house is also siblings, so you could come to see that you might be spending more time with one or more of your siblings. So good for you. On the 21st, same day as Mars goes into Gemini, <clears throat> Venus is going to have a little hiccup with Saturn. And so when they square up, it's really time to look at what is important emotionally. Matters of the heart. Now, Venus is direct. It's moved out of its retrograde, so that is good. But it's still lining up with Saturn, and Saturn's uh, probably bringing to the forefront maybe an unsolved situation that's been lingering, allowing you the opportunity to look at it and say, this is what I want to do about it, right? It's just setting it straight so that you can release it and let it go and nothing is better than dragging heavy stuff around, right? On the 24th, Mercury and Saturn, they are trying great time to sign papers and whatnot, and I feel uh, even though Mercury is retrograde, you, if this is things from the past agreements that you had before Mercury went uh, retrograde, you're okay. You're in the good. It's just not wanting to start anything new or sign anything new. So if you can, I would definitely avoid it. But it is by trying, so it's kind of like helping the situation along a little bit. And then on the 28th, another wow factor, and that is when Mercury and Uranus connect in a um, conjunction, meaning that they're sharing that same degree on the sky. And uh, this is unexpected news, communication, phone call, text, anything of that nature. Uh, and it is in your first house. So again, either you're going to be surprising somebody by doing or saying something unexpected, or you may be receiving it either way, right? So listen, this is what we have for April. But I wanted to mention before we end here is if you're not getting these videos in your email, then you want to go check uh, how your subscriptions or go to your settings here on YouTube because it might just be set up that you're only to receive every once in a while. Uh, and if you want them on a monthly basis, just check the right box there in your settings. And I'll see you there next month in May. Have a good one, Aries. Bye now.